Hi, my name is Rosica and this is the Midnight Reader. Today we are packing shit and unhauling books as we go along. I'm moving again soon and that means we gotta clean some books, pack some books, and try to get most of the books in that box. This is my little filming spot. Normally I have a chair right here. Also look at my vine. He's taller than me. I'm quite sad because I'm probably gonna have to chop him down a little bit when we move to. But we're up here because I do have some books up here. These are all like young adult books or books that I grew up reading that my parents recently mailed me that I said I didn't want them to throw away. So I'm gonna go through them. I'm probably gonna keep everything up here because these are books I specifically requested to have mailed to me. I'm gonna clean them, put them in the box, and then we're gonna take this show downstairs. I don't think there's any amazing angles to shoot this from, so this is the one we chose, okay? The Ronald Dahl Treasury, full of lovely childhood stories. Matilda is right up there for me, and I also love the BFG. There's no way everything's gonna fit in one box. This feels ambitious. Half of my Harry Potter collection. These are the original books I grew up with as a kid. My I convinced my brother to send them to me, but he could only find half. I've got the last four. I know that She Who Shall Not Be Named is not a popular figure right now for very good reason, because she was being a trash bag of a person. But despite that, I didn't love Harry Potter because of an author. I loved Harry Potter because it is one of the most meaningful stories to me growing up as a kid. And I personally am able to divorce that story that I told myself in my head with an author who's being a trash bag. That's still a very important story to me, just personally. And I try very hard to not really talk about the books because I don't actually want to support her financially in any way. But if you can't reconcile her being a trash bag human with the stories that you grew up with, I also support that. Do what's healthy for you. Dealing with Dragon series by Patricia Reed. I remember these being very funny and I think were the first role reversal that I had come across where like the princess was the competent, experienced person and the rescuer was kind of an idiot. <laughs> I remember loving this series growing up. It's pretty funny and sarcastic. I have the Alana Lioness series by Tamora Pierce. I love pretty much everything by Tamora Pierce. She was the author who made me love fantasy before I ever read Harry Potter. I have pretty much all her series here. <laughs> my love for Tamora Pierce knows no bounds. The Sea of Trolls by Nancy Farmer. I also don't remember anything about this other than I used to love this book. Did anyone else read this? Did anyone else think it was good? I remember really loving this. All right, I've done I've done everything upstairs, but we I'm anticipating some problems. Such as it's already half full. Um hmm. Trying to decide if I want to build another cardboard box or if I'm just going to get another storage bin. I am unsure. I'm unsure. We're gonna bring it downstairs and decide. Ah, down here. Because now I have to do this bookshelf. <laughs> so I think I need another box. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm going to sort them into books to keep, books to give away, books to think about giving away, or books that belong to the Hubplot subplot to see if he still wants them. Yeah. Then we'll pack the books at the end. I owe people a slight explanation for this, which is I was visiting a dear friend and as I often do, I was perusing his bookshelf and noticed that he had two copies of Infinite Jest, for which I decided to make fun of him by saying, hey, how many copies of Infinite Jest is too much? Uh, but the jest was on me because then he just gave me the other copy. <laughs> 
I definitely don't need a physical copy. If I'm going to read Infinite Jest, I'm going to probably read it on audiobook or e-reader. It's currently pressing a bunch of leaves for me, so it has its uses. But once I take the leaves out, that one is going in the giveaway pile because I've decided one copy of Infinite Jest is too much. But the leaves are pretty. <laughs> oh yeah. Fall in a book. Red Storm Rising, which I'm pretty sure is my favorite Tom Clancy book. My husband got me into them and the Hunt for Red October is one of my favorite movies, so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> I really loved this book. I thought it was a great adventure story and super like well written. I don't know. I thought it was great. This may be one of my favorite books I own. This is The Complete Novels of Charlotte and Emily Bronte. It's Jane Eyre, Shirley, Wuthering Heights, Villette, Villette? Villette? I don't know, The Professor. It says The Complete Novels. So I don't think it's, it's not everything they were written, but man, it's a hefty, look at this book. It's got like freaking gilded edges. I got this for, it was maybe two bucks at the secondhand shop. I've never read anything in it, but I do love the book. I keep meaning to be like, oh, I could pull this out and then maybe read some of the paper chapters while I'm reading it on audiobook or ebook. So I don't know, we might have to. Catalyst by Laura Holmes Anderson. Right up there in my favorite books ever as a teenager. This was Teenage Rosica's maybe favorite contemporary fiction. Sense and Sensibility, gotta have a little Austin on your bookshelves. Hilariously, I don't think I like Sense and Sensibility that much. Like, way preferred Pride and Prejudice, but for some reason, that's the Austin I own. <laughs> This is Kim by Kipling. Also never read it, but it was a secondhand book and I just, I just adore, I just adore this book. Probably never read it in paper form, but it's also one of my favorite book covers that I've ever seen. And it's old and musty and I love it, so it stays. My Amy Tans, The Valley of Amazement, Saving Fish from Drowning, Bone Setter's Daughter. I have a habit of never owning the most popular books, so I of course don't have the Joy Life Club, but I've got it like all the other Amy Tans. <laughs> Welcome down here. So this is the part where I'm hoping to get rid of a lot of books, but it's also really hard to get rid of them. This is like my collection of like poems and some classic lit and philosophy books. I was a minor in philosophy in school, but I saved pretty much all my philosophy books because they were the only thing I enjoyed reading in college. <laughs> so I've got haiku in English, which are all these glorious haikus. I bought this in a bookshop in San Francisco. It's so good. You get things like Accident Sight, An Umbrella, Catching Rain, Patricia Prime, Mending His Fence, The Neighbor's Mouth, Full of Nails, Robert Bauer, Chill Wind, The Heart of an Oak, Leaves the Chimney. These are the sort of books that like I just love owning. I'm very, very rarely in the mood to read something from them. So I've got haikus, I've got selected poems by Robert Frost, I've got a pocket book of poetry. When I was young and dumb and thought I was gonna travel the world you know, with a backpack and a dream, my idea had been to take a pocket book of poetry with me. Because apparently when you travel, you have interest in things that you've never been interested in before. <laughs> so I of course bought the poetry and then I never went on the trip. 
Ethics of Sports. I loved, oh man, I love this book. I can't get rid of this. It's hard because it's very much a textbook, but these are also the books that made me change how I thought about things. So I think the Ethics of Sport has to stay. The other one is this, it's Justice a Reader. It's wonderfully written, even though it is a textbook, I freaking love it. And of course there's things like Dogwood Flowers from when I was in college. <laughs> All the thick ass books have to press flowers. They, they have to have two uses. The Philosophical Athlete. I did a, a sports philosophy class. That and ethics were my favorite. Pragmatism and Classical American Philosophy. That one's probably also gonna stay. I'm thinking I might get rid of this one, which is, it's very much just a primer. It's just collected writings of writers like Plato. I, I mean, I'm probably never gonna open those either, but this is, this is, this is hefty. And I think we can let it go, so. The Tao of Pooh. If you're into philosophy, you should read this. It's very, it's very short and it's also very good. I, re I remember enjoying it a lot. One of my favorite books I bought in college on bullshit. <laughs> it's written like a philosophy paper on bullshit and it's hilarious and delightful and it's like 60 pages and this just, this needs to grace a bathroom somewhere is all I'm saying. And then one of my other favorite philosophy books, How It Is, which is about Native American philosophies and how our world would look different if we had not based our ethics system and our moral system in the US on Western philosophy and if we had instead based it on the philosophy we already had in this country, how our life probably would have been better. This is all like very dry academic reading, but man, that book, that book broke my brain and in a good way. We're getting lower and it's mostly textbooks down here, which I also need to get rid of because let's be honest, I've been out of school for a decade. So maybe I can give up the dream of selling some of these for money. Maybe we can just let them go. There are four books I kept from my dad to read at some point. They're mostly all history or biography books because that's a genre we both enjoy. The anatomy coloring book. I thought I would get so much more use out of this in college than I did. Like, look at this. It's kind of fantastic. It's basically like super detailed anatomical drawings with labels. My, my issue was that I was worried I'd screw it up, you know? Like, I, I didn't want to color it because I was like, oh, what if I, if I mess it up? But it's a coloring book. It's what you're supposed to do with it. I also have a bunch of journals that are barely filled out because I didn't want to ruin the pages. Is that not the coolest picture, though? The problem with books like this is I'm like, oh, I should keep it as a reference. I've never used this in a decade. I've literally never referenced this. So the only thing left on the shelf are journals and crafting books. Basically what I think I'm gonna do right now is I did my first pass and this stack of books is stuff that the hub plot has to go through and see if he wants to keep any of those because they're not my books, they're his. Most of the books are mine though. This is the initial keeping pile. And then that stack, these two, those are definite giveaway. And what I'm gonna do, because I've learned this through many years of moving, is I'm now gonna go through all the books I've decided to keep again, because I can probably find things in there that I don't need to keep, so. <sighs> Take two.
keep books on their bookshelf just because they want people to see them and think that they're literary and smart. Because I think that's the main reason I have Catch-22 on my shelf. I remember liking this, but I read it in high school. I'm probably never going to read it again. But I like that people see it on my shelf and they're like, oh, she's so smart and literary. <laughs> All right, I pulled out another seven on the second pass. And currently this stack right here are all the books that I'm keeping. So we're gonna do a third pass just to make sure everything that we're keeping needs to be kept. And then we're going to pack up the books that I'm keeping. Tom Clancy you could really put fucking descriptions on the back instead of you and your Top Gun pose because that would actually help me decide which of your fucking books to keep. Arr! They're all like this. <laughs> Just tell me what the book's about. All right, we made some progress. I have a total 26 books to give away. All these are going to get packed. I may throw out a few Clancy's, we'll see. We'll see, but for now, I think this is this is pretty much it, and then the help plot has to go through his books. So I'm gonna dust these off, put them away, and we'll see how many more boxes I need. <laughs> Box one. Box two. Giveaway pile. Plenty cleanup. Help plot to-do list. Now, I just have to get all my knickknacks. This is a whole shelf of tarot cards and journals. I gotta get all that off. And then I'm gonna show you the very coolest thing about this bookshelf, okay? Let's see if you can guess what it is. All right, the bookshelf is clear. Do you wanna guess what a secret power is? You're gonna find out in three, two, one. They fold! So it splits into two, and then they fold flat. The shelves fold up, and the sides fold in. And is that not just about the best thing ever? <laughs> All right, that's it for now. There'll be plenty more moving-ish vlog times, I'm sure. I'm not packing away things like my TBR pile because I'm gonna pack these boxes and put them in a storage container to wait for the move. The only books I'm gonna have in the house are ones on my Kindle, audiobook, and of course any physical books that I'm waiting to read. So I've got like six or seven upstairs that are like on the pile of things to read, so. But yeah, I'm getting rid of more books than I thought I was going to. Some of those I'm going to take to tiny libraries in town and see if I can uh, exchange them for stuff, the ones that are like newer or might be more popular to read, so. The rest are just gonna go to Goodwill. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and happy reading.